hi, welcome back to the channel. At Play Me, we specialize in making short and sweet board game reviews that get you back to doing whatever you're doing. And today I wanted to highlight Karuba. This is gonna be the next installment in my Gateway Games for Every Occasion series. Karuba is an excellent addition to any board game collection because it is fast to play, easy to teach, and so, so addictive. Um, I'm gonna throw some of the boring admin stuff up here and then we will get it on the table for you to take a look at. Welcome to Karuba on the Table. A game of Karuba starts out by um, players taking turns selecting where the temples and the people are going to go. Uh, the way that we usually do this is we just assign each player one color and each player chooses where to put the temple in the jungle and where to put the people on the beach. And what you're going to do is race to get your people from the beach line into the jungle, into the temple. The first person to get to the temple picks up that temple's respective award and they go down in descending order. And one person gets to be what we call the bingo caller and everyone else has to put their tiles out like this player. So on this player's side, you see here that they have um, ordered their tiles in numerical order to make it easier for them to find. And then the bingo caller will just pick a tile off off the top, announce it very clearly, 31, and then everybody either places it somewhere on their board and it has to stay in its um, orientation. So then you would place it somewhere on your board and if you cannot place it, then you would burn it. So in this player's case, right here. If it has a gem on it, you add the gem to it. And any time that you finish your turn, on a tile with a gem, you get to claim that gem. The gold ones are worth two victory points at the end and the uh, clear ones are worth one. So they do add to your total. At the end of the game, you total up all of your artifacts and all of your golden diamond and the person with the highest score wins. The way that you move your players through the jungle is by discarding. So whenever you have a tile that you cannot place, and trust me, you do not want to be doing this if you can place them because this game requires a lot of efficiency and if you're burning for no reason you will never finish some of your route. You will sometimes have to make that judgment call. Sometimes you'll look at it and be like, oh man, there's no way I'm going to connect brown so I'm just going to give up on brown. Let's say I pick up a tile and I can't place it. You can't reorient them remember. So I look at my board and I have nowhere to put this. What I do then is I burn it and you burn it by flipping it upside down. If you're the bingo caller you toss them face up but everyone else flips them upside down. And then you get to move any character the number of exits. So this tile has two exits. So when I discard it, I can move someone twice. So let's say I move this one once and this one once. And now because those characters have ended their turns on tiles with gems, I get to collect those gems. You can always split up any amount. So if I draw a tile with four exits, I can move my characters up to four. One character up to four, four characters up to one each. It doesn't matter. You split it up however you want it. You get four movement points. So what I like to do is actually build my grid with as little of these um, four ways as possible because I really like to use them for movement. But other people really like them because they're obviously very handy at connecting things. The game ends when we run out of tiles. So everybody gets a chance to finish their game. And then at the end, you just total up your points and that's Karuba. We'll come back up top. Now that you've seen it on the table, you can see why it's so addictive and fun. In Karuba, it makes a lot of sense to plan ahead and try to figure out where you're gonna want your intersections to be and stuff like that. And so then as you're getting a tile, you're like, okay, where does this fit into my greater plan? And then as things aren't going the way you want because things come out in a random order, then you're sitting there going, okay, well, am I gonna wait for that perfect piece or am I gonna do something less than optimal just so that I can get moving? Because eventually, if you don't get your guys moving and you don't start connecting those roots, you just can't get everybody in. Like it, Sometimes you might lock yourself out entirely. You might be like, oh, I'm gonna do a curve over here and then realize that you've actually never created a way for that temple to connect back to the overall grid. And so then you're, you're always motivated by wanting to play the next game because you're like, okay, I messed that up, but I can do it better. I wanna play it again. Or, okay, I think I can be more streamlined this time. Let's play it again. And I have never really played a game of Karuba where I've been like, okay, that's it, put it away, pack it up. We always play like a second or a third because it is very addictive that way that you're always constantly pushing yourself to be like i know i can do it just a little bit better let's try it again let's try it again you know and so for our family we have just given it a ton of plays and when i show it to people who are non-gamers for example my mother she really likes this game this is one of the games that i can get her to play so karuba fun simple addictive show it to your family and friends that are new to the hobby it's a very like unintimidating entry for for new gamers. So this has been Play Me. If you like what we do, please like and subscribe and we'll catch you later. Bye.